Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Creation Myths. Today, I'm going to tell you how to beat genetic entropy quickly and easily anytime this nonsense concept comes up in a debate with creationists. So real quick, genetic entropy comes from Dr. John Sanford, a young earth creationist geneticist. Uh, he wrote a book called Genetic Entropy in the Mystery of the Genome that was published in 2005. And basically the idea behind genetic entropy is that on net, mutations are going to be harmful. Most mutations will be both harmful and unselectable, meaning natural selection can't do anything about them which means that mutations are accumulating. Inevitably, that's going to lead to a loss of fitness and a loss of function in the genome. You'll hear creationists use phrases like genetic decay or genomic decay or genomes are winding down, whatever phrase you want to hear. Sometimes they even just say it's like rust building up on a car, right? It's little things that you can't select against, but they're harmful, and over time, it's going to lead to extinction. That's the genetic entropy argument. Now, First thing you always want to point out with this is that it's never been observed and the claimed cases of genetic entropy are wrong. Creationists, Sanford and Dr. Rob Carter, published a paper uh, about H1N1 influenza virus going extinct due to genetic entropy. Yeah, I'll spare you the population genetics of why they're wrong and just say that the virus they said went extinct didn't go extinct. So not genetic entropy. There are tons of good reasons in terms of like basic evolutionary bio and basic population genetics. We could be here for over an hour going over all of the nuances, but that's not what this is for. The point here is to give people who are not specifically in the field of evolution or population genetics ammunition to effectively push back against this nonsense just lie whenever creationists bring it up. So here is how you are going to show creationists are wrong when it comes to genetic entropy. There's two ways to attack this. You've got direct observations, and then you've got peer-reviewed papers that just straight up prove genetic entropy is wrong, and we're going to go through kind of both angles here. Okay, first, direct observations. Here's what you say. Mice disprove genetic entropy. If genetic entropy is right, mice should be extinct, just straight up. Everything creationists say about the human genome applies equally to mice. The difference is that mice have really short generation times. We're talking like six to eight weeks. Everything else is comparable to humans. Mutation rate, genome size, number of genes, all that stuff is in the same ballpark. So if you have your 100-ish mutations in the human genome every generation, and they're harmful, but they're unselectable, and they're going to cause humans to go extinct, well, if you do that math for mice, they should already be extinct. And creationists have no response to that. The existence of mice, the continued viability of mice, disproves genetic entropy, and creationists have no counter-argument to that. Now, to be clear, they'll come up with something about population size and strength of selection. Oh, well, mice, you know, they have stronger selection, so you get rid of more of the mutations. And when they do that, thank them for disproving genetic entropy. Because genetic entropy is set up as universal and inevitable. Mutations build up, selection can't fix them, extinction will inevitably result. As many creationists say, genomes are winding down. Once they open the door to, oh, well, depends on population size, selection strong enough, once they do that, that's the ballgame. They've admitted genetic entropy doesn't work as claimed, and now we're just talking about population genetics. So they're the ones making the claim, make them show their math. Make them show the population genetics math as to why mice are fine, but humans are suffering from genetic entropy. When they won't or can't, which, to be clear, they won't, you can just shrug and say, okay, so you're making this up with no actual basis in fact. It's an ad hoc fix for no other reason than you need one. Oh, that's not the case? Great, show me the math. And they will not be able to show you the math, and you could just hammer them on it. So that's how you use mice to win the argument about genetic entropy. But you don't even have to do that because there are two specific peer-reviewed papers that prove genetic entropy is wrong. The first 
is Springman et al. 2010, Evolution at a High Imposed Mutation Rate, Adaptation Obscures the Load. And this was done as an experiment done in bacteriophages, phage T7. Now, again, the whole point of genetic entropy is that the vast majority of mutations are harmful. So as mutations build up, extinction must result. But in this study, where they increase the mutation rate of the viruses, no extinction. The viruses reached an equilibrium between beneficial and harmful mutations and selection, exactly as standard pop gen predicts and directly disproving genetic entropy. If creationists respond by saying something about big populations and strong selection, oh, viruses and bacteria, they reproduce so fast, there's so many, of course selection operates in those cases, similar to what we just talked about with mice, you could respond the same way. Thanks for agreeing that genetic entropy is wrong. They may not realize that the concession they just made means they're arguing against genetic entropy. So emphasize that point. Spell it out slowly. Rub it in their faces. We agree that genetic entropy is wrong because we agree that there are situations where selection can overcome the burden of mutation accumulation. And the whole point of genetic entropy is that selection can't overcome that burden. And at this point, they'll probably pivot back to humans, right? They'll say, oh, well, that works for microbes, but humans, humans are different. We're big, we have slow generation times, small population compared to the microbes. So maybe it doesn't work in viruses, but this concept still totally works for humans. And at that point, you demand they show the math because now it's context specific. You can't point to viruses like influenza or bacteriophages or whatever, or some other animal even, and say, look, it happens there, it applies to humans. No, no, no. We're past that because now it's context specific. So now you have to show that it's specifically the case in humans. Show the population genetics math for humans that it works. They won't be able to do it, and now you can hammer them on that. You're sure this is the case for humans, even though it isn't for viruses, and it isn't for mice, but it definitely happens in humans. Uh-huh, okay. But you can't show the math of how that works. But you're sure it works. But you can't show the math. Okay, sure. I buy that. Yeah. That's what you do. Make them show the math. Demand they show the math. And of course, when they can't, you can just hammer them on that mercilessly. Now, the second paper you absolutely should bring up is one of my favorites. Hancock and Stern Cardinal 2024 in the Journal of Mathematical Biology, Back to the Fundamentals, a reply to Baster and Sanford 2018. In this paper, we used empirical distributions of fitness effects to model the effects of mutations and selection in populations. A distribution of fitness effects is just what effect does the mutation have? Like, what are the range of effects that a mutation will have on fitness, right? This is important because it means we based our model on the actual effects that mutations have based on experimental data when people have checked. John Sanford came up with the concept of genetic entropy in trying to prove genetic entropy used a made up distribution of fitness effects. What you see on screen right now, that's what he used in his book. What's his source? His source is he made it up. It's not based on real data. When you use real data, no genetic entropy. It's that simple. And once again, creationists have no response to these papers. Ask them directly. These papers disprove genetic entropy. Have you read them? If the answer is no, they're going to squirm, but make them answer. Don't dodge the question. Have you read these two papers? If the answer is no, then that's the ball game. You're saying, oh, okay, then you, you say genetic entropy is real. You don't even know the literature. Here's papers that disprove it. The end. If the answer is yes, then you can have more fun. Now you can say, great, you've read the papers, you disagree with the papers. Tell us how these authors are wrong, specifically. Show us in the papers where the authors get the math wrong and how you correct it. Show us the right math that actually shows genetic entropy is real. You've read the papers, you're saying they're wrong, great. Explain for everyone exactly how the authors got the math wrong. Don't let them change the topic. Stay on this and make them squirm. When they try to wriggle away, point out to the audience that that's what they're doing. You never addressed either of these papers. I think it's because you can't and you know you can't. 
I don't think you can correct their math, which again, directly shows you're wrong. Unless you can tell me exactly how that math is wrong and show the right version, this debate is over. Now, the last thing you need to be ready for here is for creationists to bring up a program called Mendel's Accountant. This is a population genetic simulation that creationists claim shows that genetic entropy is real. When they do that, all you have to do is point out that Mendel's Accountant is literally rigged. It's rigged. It will always show genetic entropy because it's written to always show genetic entropy. And some people have dived into this. I'll link the information down below. Basically, in this program, if you have a mutation that's harmful and that registers some effect, and then the reverse mutation occurs, that reverse mutation doesn't have the same magnitude of effect as the original mutation. So you have a single mutation followed by the opposite mutation, and that situation, no net change in the genome, has a fitness cost. How is that even possible? It's because the program is rigged. That's why. It's a fraudulent program designed to spit out the results that creationists want. And again, I'll link that down below so you can all read about it. So genetic entropy has been disproven by real-world populations and with real data. Respond to those papers or take a hike. That's the end of the debate. And bonus, the computer program that they claim supports it is literally rigged to support it. It's just lies top to bottom. That is how you beat genetic entropy. Real world populations, papers disprove it, the program is rigged. The end. Creationists have no response to any of those points, so you make those points and you don't let go. And that's what I want to see people doing anytime genetic entropy comes up in a debate about creationism. Thanks for watching. Please remember to hit the like button, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you become a channel member, you get access to pre-recorded videos like this right away. As always, don't get fooled.